Okay, today I'm in Ascot with professional tipster, punter and entrepreneur, Simon Holden. Thanks very much for uh, agreeing to talk to us, Simon, in your, in your betting lair, I assume this is. Um, now, I, as I've often <laughs> mentioned in these interviews, I do my... I do my um, research. Now, you gave me a number of one of your friends. Mistakenly. I should put that in inverted commas, uh, yeah, yeah. Nigel Seeley. He was very glowing about you, but he did say he's definitely a Branson. Well, yeah. Firstly, thanks for coming. Uh, yeah, he did. And, of course, we're all talking about the the fantastic Patrick Veach interview that you did. Um I've got a, a slightly off the wall theory here. Of course, the Branson factor is that that somebody who appears to be nice and wonderful actually will be the one with the old blade between the uh, children. And they do say, don't you, you have to be one hundred percent behind someone before you can stab them in the back. But uh, I just wonder if, if Veach was playing a bit of a double bluff there. Whether the great man himself has got the Branson factor. But uh, no, I I try and be nice to people. Um, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, I've probably made two-thirds friends and one-third people who don't like me. So I'm probably, if Branson's Premier League, I'm probably mid-range championship on the Branson factor. You have to put Sealy in the not-to-be-trusted bracket. Uh, well, relegation at so, least. So you describe yourself as a professional tipster, punter and entrepreneur. So which predominantly is it? I'd say now uh, I would say tipster. I think we was talking earlier. I said if you if you, if you call yourself a professional punter, I think really that's all you you should do. Um, now, so I've got YouTube. I've got various other tipping avenues and broadcasting avenues, and obviously the racing syndicate. So I think kind of uh, tipster first, but um, I'm certainly looking to to punt seriously four or five days a week. It used to be seven, so I've, I've cut down rather than stopped. Well, in recent years, you've been a semi-professional, at least very successful punter. So how long did it take you to actually crack it? Um, over 20 years. And I would say to anyone, you know, it's that the longest journey starts with a small step. And the journey from being a, a an appalling gambler in the sense that uh, I always think gambling's a very... It's not a grey area, it's very black and white. You look at the end of the month, you've either made money or you've lost money. Now, the people who've lost money, like I did in the old days, they can live in this in this never-never land of the fact that they're incredible gamblers. They've just had a little bit of bad luck that month, that the racing is fixed, the usual things, rather than the difficult look in the mirror session where you realise you, you're going wrong. Predominantly, that's having to too many bets and I used to bet in every race every day which is just punting suicide so 20 years of 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 learning the game and then some really the best thing I ever did say was to stop for three or four months and not out of any uh, addictive need to stop but just to stop and actually learn the craft and if you're betting every race every day if you're constantly punting then you I think you're too much in the fray to to take a, a step back and look Obviously, check your results, look at things you're good at, work on the things you're bad. So probably my mid-30s was when I started to win seriously, which is, is quite a, an apprenticeship. Yeah, so would it be right in saying that you're predominantly a goat punter these days? No, um, probably 70% horse racing, 30% golf. I, I, I started betting on golf very, very early, started designing my own ratings. was a huge Keith Elliott disciple. Uh, still I think he's one of the, the great minds we've ever had on, on psychology of punting. So I started to look at his his work and do some like individual player ratings, develop them. And I've had golf punting services for the last 15 years. Um, predominantly now I favour the PGA Tour, I think. But uh, but racing's the day, golf's the sort of cherry on the cake, racing's the day-to-day the -day, uh, bread and butter. Okay, now you're obviously quite comfortable in front of the camera because you're doing it nearly every day with Holden's Horses. You mentioned a YouTube channel. So what's yeah. the idea behind that? Well, I got asked to do it and it was just before lockdown and Agreed was really excited about doing it. And then, of course, the law of sod racing came to a, a stop. So I thought, well, let's carry on doing it. Uh, There's still places in the world that were, were racing. So we became like an American racing service, did some French racing, did some racing in Hong Kong. 
got built up what I would describe as a cult audience during that period, which others have described as an incredibly small audience. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it kind of got me started. Now, any, any you'll know yourself that the more you do these things, the more you slowly evolve, um, the less mistakes, the less you go, um, although I've just done that about four times. So it was a real education when, of course, our racing came back behind closed doors, was kind of ready and I broadcast every every day. My time at Betfan, we, we did uh, Betfan TV, which I hosted every week, which was, again, uh, the people that watched it liked it, um, you know, both of them. But they were, we, we, we used to do it from a flat and then we did some Facebook Live. So in the early kind of days of all this, before YouTube evolved, I've always been sort of out there. And so I've got thousands of hours in the uh, in the tank already so yeah I, re I really do enjoy that intimacy I mean, with people that was you know building anything up from scratch which i assume you did that's a yeah. big big task so you've done you know regardless of how big it was to get any audience from scratch is a is a is an achievement isn't it yeah it is and you i think with anything if you put content out uh, there are obviously professional ways of getting more eyes on it and and working with the algorithms and as you build up but I'm a great believer if you put content out, it will find its audience. You'll find the people that like you and you like them. And I've kind of found that now. Uh, I've been doing this a long time and I've found the people that like my kind of catchphrase, heavy based approach and, and reoccurring um, themes and, and certain bets and big prices. And I give every bet a name. Uh, was a huge fan of Mark Wynn Stanley, the couch still am. Was lucky enough to work with him a bit at Tip TV. And I used to love his approach. Uh, Derek McGovern was another hero of mine. And they would always tag a, a, a gag on with the bets and stuff like that. And I, I love that. I try and make it entertaining. A, so people will keep watching. And B, so it'll build that that niche up. So, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely love YouTube. Now, you, you've been quite honest with, with me telling me stuff before. Now, it's safe to say that the Lord Oakwell... Uh, tipping service didn't initially go well when you your first foray into it well i think you've been very unfair there so si, for saying initially it never went fucking well at all but uh <laughs> yeah it was my i'm a great believer if you want to do something the first thing you've got to do is actually start because there's so many people who like look over the like the hedge in life and say look at somebody else i'd love to do that or, or another thing where they say i could do that and i think you should just give it a go because if you do it and it doesn't work do something else so I always wanted to do a, a, a tipping service, but I was kind of, I didn't work in the industry. I'm not from a, a racing background at all. And I um, I just didn't know how to go about it. So I had some like business cards and I called it Oakwell Racing. Of course, my my uh, Twitter tag now is at Lord Oakwell, where that comes from. Um, and so I kept that, but it was an unmitigated disaster. So nobody joined for, I think one bloke joined by accident. He probably like rang me up for the cricket scores or something. I managed to like get him to stay. And then I got one customer and I gave five bets in a week for one. I think the last one fell and he rang me back and said, it's not for me. So, <laughs> so I thought, oh, yeah, well, yeah. So, but what it did was it, it gave me a start. And then when I, when I went to go for the job at price form, I was able to say, tick the box, have you worked in the industry with one hand over the, <laughs> the fingers crossed, one hand over the mouth. I was able to tick the box, yes. So with, with anything, you know, it's a start, a disastrous start, but a start nonetheless. Now, you mentioned um, you mentioned Bet TV, uh, Tip TV and Bet Fan. So can you tell us a little bit more about those? Yeah, I, I worked for, for Price Form as, as racing and golf correspondent which was a very very early online magazine um and i was writing lots of content and i was doing every golf tournament i was doing like the, the big uh, racing festivals so again it was a real education in in discipline and content right i was still working at the time in the real world and um price form sadly folded and i was told by a friend of mine paul graham that there was a new company called betfan and at the time i, I thought oh, i'll just punt go back to my old life you know I was a bit fed up really with the, the thing folding but I rang Betfan and and started with uh, a golf service then a racing service and at the time I was working with my, my, my mentor I've mentioned to you before Chris Anzani who was the morning mole in the in the resident football outlook before Steve Mellish I was working with Chris uh, he came to Betfan originally but he more than anybody was able was able to get rid of all the like bad side of my like 
ponting and tipping and leave me with like what was left. So I, I really what was, what was that then? What was the bad? Um, uh, anger, emotion, paranoia. Everything was fixed. Um, it's not my fault. Go kind of thing. I'll tell you a funny story about Chris. He went away for a few days and left me in charge, and said, "Whatever you do, Boyle, like don't have too many bets." Well, the first one I tipped one. I thought I quite fancy a few more. It so I put about five or six out over the three days. Well, anyway, they, they, they were all like nowhere or whatever. And I thought, oh, Christ, he's going to come back. He's going to go berserk, which he did. Uh, and my missus at the time, I said to her, if this Welsh bloke rings, t- tell him I'm not in. Um, and she almost did the classic when he rang. Uh, he says he's not in when I was hiding upstairs. So eventually, when it, about the third time I came down, I was like, oh, Chris, I was just about to ring you, mate. He's like, yeah, of course you were. And he sort of said, you know, don't you ever do this again, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And so I learned about the danger of being cocky and, and over tipping. So I, from that day, I've never tipped like a, a punter. I may have had bad spells, but I've never tipped on emotion. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about your book in the next part because you, you go into this sort of emotional the part of um, of betting there. I mean, um, you, at, at those places you worked with, is it um, Mike Catamo, Nigel Seeley, people like that? At that yeah, time? yeah. Yeah, I worked with the cat very briefly. It was a chance to get your own back on Sealy. Yeah, yeah. I work, well, well, I worked with, 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 with Mike Catamol briefly, stayed like friend with him, uh, 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 top, abs- absolute top bloke. One of those people that when you meet him, you, you're hoping he's as nice as you think he might be. And, and he is one of those few people. And, and as we know, Cy, there are some people in this business who you have the opposite feeling when you meet, but uh, the cat's a different class. Um, yeah, we... Tip TV was fantastic for me because it was, I'd worked with Betfan for about four or five years there and um, was was really like supported to, to kind of develop things as I, as, I, as I wanted to most of the time. And then to go down to London and film in a proper TV studio with like Nigel Seeley, Couch, Jamie Banks, who's gone on to work for PDC, who's like a brilliant, brilliant young broadcaster, not so young anymore, um, was like, was great. And we had some really good times Seeley is, is without doubt one of the great football uh, judges, if fashion perhaps is, a, is still an issue for him, but <laughs> it, it, it was great. And, and um, I felt then that before that I'd been, not pigeonholed, but I'd been in sort of the internet. Uh, and I, I think it's happening less, but I thought at the time that the broadcast media and the, uh, the media in general looked down on in, the people in the internet I think that's that's less but I'm talking like seven eight nine years ago but that yeah that was fun the great great times down at tip tv and as I've said before the only thing it lacked to be a, a brilliant like tv station was was viewers if we'd only have had viewers we would have been great 